Out of everything that's set to take place in Amphibia's final season, the thing I'm without a doubt most excited for is Anne and Marcy's second reunion. Or well, I guess I should say Night Marcy and Anne's first meetup, which could very well introduce the powers this hybrid being has to offer. Anne can't be the only one with a new powerful form, right? Granted, Marcy's is presumably against her will, but still, gotta even the playing field amongst the three girls. And with the Knight being the end-all antagonist of Amphibia alongside King Andreas, more or less, I thought it would be cool to discuss the clash between Anne and Marcy, how this clash would serve for the conclusion of Marcy's character, and how Anne would help save Marcy from the Knight's malevolent control. Even though the episode Olivia and Yunan has not aired yet, if you saw the Season 3 trailer with the clips pertaining to that episode, it'll likely conclude with the scene of the Knight learning to control Marcy's body, then smiling evilly. And it seems like one of the main reasons he was able to gain control over her was through mental manipulation. Marcy was already in a terrible mental state at the end of True Colors. Her secret of intentionally taking her friends to Amphibia had been brought to light. The person who took her under his wing when she arrived in Amphibia turned out to be a power-hungry tyrant, and we can't forget the reason she wanted to go to Amphibia in the first place. Running away from her family since they were going to move out of state, and she was fearing she'd never be able to keep the bond she had formed with Anne and Sasha. Even if you put a grown adult in these situations, that'd be a lot of strain on their mental health, but for a 13-year-old girl, can't even begin to imagine. Now in a comatose state feeling like she's lost everything and there's no more hope, it's very possible she gave into the temptations of the night. Don't you think it's time to say goodbye to those childhood friends of yours? yours. That statement about saying goodbye to those childhood friends could just be scratching the surface of everything the knight said to her in order to control her body. But just because the knight has a body now doesn't mean he'll be able to just start popping off like he's been using it since birth. It's going to take time to adjust. I believe that's what the tubes connected to Marcy's arms and in the middle of the helmet are for. You know, the knight's training wheels, if you will, for the body. Well, why stop there? Why not have control over Marcy's calamity powers on top of that? Ensuring he never has to worry about control breaking since the green calamity stone is represented by the mind. So if he's able to control the mind stone, doesn't have to worry about Marcy Marcy's mind overtaking it. It wouldn't surprise me at all if Marcy's powers granted her mind-related abilities alongside the typical super strength and speed the other two stones give. Like Future Sight, for example. Let's call her Charlotte Katakuri. However, for the knight to do this, he or Andrus would need to go back to the first temple and undo the work and Marcy and the planters put in. Or at least some of it? I'm still unsure whether refilling the stone completely to give Marcy's body her powers back would prevent the Calamity Box from working again, since I'm sure the knight would want as much power from it as possible to be on par with Anne at the very least. It's also possible the liquid in Marcy's rejuvenation tank is powered by energy from her stone, with the liquid being green and all, allowing Andreas to give his lord more power without hindering the Calamity Box's world-traveling ability. Of course, the green liquid could just be a cosmetic effect for Marcy, like when she wore a green outfit in Battle of the Bands. And I know we don't have any specific evidence pertaining to what the knight's natural powers could be yet, but if this thing's existence is enough to make King Andreas of all people follow his orders without question, that alone is kind of scary to think about. Regardless, if any of this does happen, I think it'll likely take place off-screen, considering the upcoming episode synopses for the rest of Season 3A seem to imply the remaining events will take place on Earth and exclusively Earth, with the exception of Olivia and Yunan, of course, ending with the mid-season finale, Froggy Little Christmas, and King Andreas pulling up to Earth alongside his deadly surprise, likely referring to Nightmare. With this episode being a 22-minute episode, there'll be more than enough time for Anne to face off with this Marcy. Anne definitely won't want to fight Marcy either. You know, she'll attempt to get through to her with words as much as she can until she's forced to defend herself. As of right now, Anne is only able to bring out these powers whenever under extreme emotional distress, usually whenever her loved ones are about to be harmed or have been harmed before she gets the chance to react. Though I'm hoping by the time Anne's Sterminator airs, or whenever Anne figures out how to find this Mother of Ohms, she'll have more knowledge and control over these powers, not needing to be in a toxic headspace to access them anymore. That way she can properly defend herself against Night Marcy without Night Marcy needing to almost kill one of her loved ones, for example. And will be forced to fight on the defensive though because she knows it's her friend's body and she's still in there somewhere. I could also see the Knight trying to break Anne's spirit by telling her Marcy chose to give in to the mind control, whether that be the truth or a lie. But Anne has enough faith in Marcy as a friend to know she isn't gone for good. That's just the kind of person Anne is. We all know well enough by now how much faith she has in people she cares about, regardless of what decisions they've made in the past. If they show signs of changing and learning in the future, she'll let them back in. I'm looking straight into your eyes, Sasha. I'm so happy I trusted Sasha again. I always knew, even after everything that happened, we'd work it out. But I don't think Anne alone would be enough to get Marcy out of this state. Having Anne free Marcy from the knight so soon wouldn't make sense. Yes, Marcy is needed to fulfill the prophecy, but the knight needs to have some proper screen time as the endgame villain before that's done. Just ask King Andreas. And as for you, my dear, your part is just beginning.
and seeing Anne try to handle this matter alone would bring some awesome character moments for Anne to the table. A theme in Amphibia's Season 3 we've been seeing a lot is Anne shouldering all, all this stress about the Calamity Box, Amphibia, and King Andreas just herself, being super pessimistic about taking help from others. She has made steps in the right direction, yes, but knowing her, she'll want to handle Andreas and the Knight Solo if things look like they're getting too dangerous. Failing to save Marcy the first time will be a major eye-opener and needs to stop thinking she can do everything alone. Sounds like a certain little green boy from a well-known anime slash manga, am I right? With Anne alone not being able to get through to Marcy, that leaves Sasha needing to lend her assistance too. Of course, she needs to get back to Earth first. Perhaps with Andreas away from his castle post, she'll be able to infiltrate it at some point and use it so she can get back. The box doesn't need to follow whoever is traveling out of world anymore if it's connected to the castle pedestal. You know, Cloak Bot is a perfect example of that. But Sasha would need to get her powers back first, meaning that would need to be touched on before a Sasha-focused episode about infiltrating Newtopia Castle to use the box, unless they decide to off-screen her getting her powers back, in which case I'd be very sad. The combined efforts of Anne and Sasha's pleas would be enough to awaken Marcy's conscience. Being able to hear the faint cries of the ones she held dear and knowing they still love her to death and not only want her back, but need her back. I'd like to think that would be more than enough to get Marcy's head back in the game, you know, knowing her friends still cared all this time after being apart for so long and after what she did. At this point, she should know by now that moving states won't cause this friendship trio to dwindle over time. This would allow Marcy to expel the knight from her mind and have access to her calamity powers again. If I were to compare it to anything, it would be kind of like how the all-for-one, one-for-all vestige world works in My Hero Academia. The knight acting like a parasite inside Marcy's brain, too powerful to shake off of even if she changed her mind prior to seeing Anne or Sasha again while having clear enough imagery to see what's happening in there. The knight growing stronger while Marcy grows weaker, making this triumph over this evil deity feel that much more rewarding for her and us viewers, while also not completely straying away from the endgame prophecy of the knight being vanquished by all three stars rather than just one. With all three girls back together and at their most powerful, they can finally fulfill their guardian duties and make sure evil cannot harm other worlds ever again. Of course, these are just my personal speculations on the matter. I'd love to know what you guys think. How do you think Marcy will be freed from the knight's possession? Will she come to Earth with King Andreas on Christmas or later on? You know, let me know in the sweet old comments section down there. And let me get some pogs in chat for Bone for creating the incredible artwork for this video's thumbnail. Their social media links will be in the description down below if you're interested in commissioning them or just want some cool art to look at. The pose the two girls are doing in the thumbnail is a reference to the One Piece anime opening number 18 when Doflamingo and Luffy are about to clash with each other head on. If anyone managed to know that before even clicking on this video, then congrats, you're just as much of a weeb as I am. Per usual, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like down below, it helps out a ton, but for now, I will see you guys next time, peace out, take care, bye bye